at it together again uh, a little bit of vacation time and uh, kind of have a little dock of things to, to go over for today and we'll just see where we end up time wise yep. and we if remember last time around so we talked about the final X we had our wing bet and then we also had our other bet with the shoes now I guess picking up where we left off, I still owe Tyler some wings. We were going to go uh, TNT Hot Wings today, but they're not open for lunch until Wednesday. Uh, so we're going to hold off on that. But on the flip side, uh, I think we can say that I won the bet on, on the shoes on yeah. the shoes because I hit mm -hmm. um, cost of the Sly Fox dead on. Yep. I was at 130, you were at 140. And then we were both off on the, the baseline model. Yeah. Um, they, they're they higher than, than what we expected. And then the uh, Snyder, Caliga, Caliga, I'm not sure. Caligula. Caligula, I'm not sure exactly how you say it. Um, awesome looking shoes. They're at the top end, was it 165? Yeah, it's like, like 160, 170. Like, yeah. So those are really expensive. So I think... Um, as much as I wanted the the grips on the one, yeah. uh, I'm gonna go Sly Fox. I'm gonna go ahead and match the backpack I already got. I already got the uh, that I got for Christmas. So I'm gonna go with the the Sly Fox. Said you said you were gonna go Sly Fox. Yeah, I'm going Sly and Fox. Just out of I guess Dave Schultz. Just for anybody else who who really cares, we were gonna go our colorway reveal for which ones we're gonna order. I guess. And then um, so which one? Hey, there's my bag. I got that. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. Um, so which ones were you going with? You're gonna go. So I've been torn. I've been torn. Uh, they've got two colors for those y'all don't know. They have the white, like off white and gray. Um, then they also have the black and gray. Yeah. Uh, both look really awesome. I've been back and forth. Um, I've already got a pair of black shoes, so I think I'm just gonna go white. I've never had a pair of white shoes. So the, first. the gray, the yeah, the white, the gray. more white gray one. Yeah, I've, I don't know what it, exactly the color name was. I, I read the color name on their website before the mm -hmm. pre-sale opened up and. Before we, now before we get into yours, for those of y'all who don't know, if you did look at the pre-sale for the rudest.com. Yeah, there's the, yeah, both of them. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's see, we're going to play the whole horrible, um, whatchamacallit, or get that angle right there. Anyway, you can kind of, there we go. Kind of see it, it's not real good screen on screen, but those are the two different colorways. Um, you get a free well, shirt too. From the yeah, so if you do the pre-order, you get a free shirt. So and I think everybody listened to us. So everybody did get online and, uh, and crashed the site. So we said support yeah. Rudis. Um, too much support. But. Yeah, just kidding. Um, by no means that was that just us or yeah. us at all. Um, but yeah, so right now their site's down. Uh, they've had tremendous support for the pre-order. Uh, I think this is just kind of a, another one of those things that's a game changer for shoes yep. for wrestling apparel uh that kind of stuff in general um amazing amount of support for kyle snyder the company rudis with all the stuff being out so these are the bottoms yeah those are the bottoms the bottoms i believe are the same bottoms as their the baseline shoe which i mean they're still pretty fresh um you know i'm, I'm still down with those but um I think it just opens up the, yeah. the market too. Uh, I think I saw somewhere on an Instagram post or something. Um, Which the scrap base, life? The baseline ones aren't bad looking. You no, the baseline ones are nice too. But uh, gotta, you know, if we're gonna do it, we we'll go ahead and do it. But um, <laughs> scrap life, I believe, said, "Hey, we hear you about shoes. People have been asking them about them. Uh, yes, they're an Under Armour affiliate, but doesn't necessarily mean it has to be an Under Armour wrestling shoe. Although that would be kind of cool." Um, at the same time, though, it's just cool to see other people doing something. I think it's going to be really awesome. Tyler's going to go with the light gray, off white one, or whichever we're going to call. It. I'm going to go with the just go ahead and get the other one. I'm going to go with the black then, and because actually I was like, I got black shoes too. Late. I was like, no, I don't. Um, yeah. All my shoes have lately been uh, green, mm -hmm. green, gold, or green, yellow. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the the black once the site is up. I'm going to get those, and we will both have our, our new coaches' shoes. For, no, for the, next year the only thing I'm worried about and this is one thing that it it's personally just my opinion I always worry about buying shoes online because I usually don't because I like to see how they fit on my feet 
and True. just make sure they're not fit too big, too small. But wrestling shoes usually run perfectly sized. Um, I know my Adidas ones fit a little tighter, um, mm -hmm. but that's the one thing I'm nervous about. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited. We can probably like when we get them in, we can probably do like a little review. Uh, oh review. yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, we yeah. will definitely do that. So. We're both going to hit the pre-order whenever the site is up, and we'll both be keeping tabs on it. We'll both let each other know, hey, site is up, go ahead, Absolutely. get online, yeah. get yours, you know, and yeah, we will definitely do that. So whenever they come in, we will do a little unboxing, shoe reveal, uh, kind of see them in person, decide which colorway we like better, if there is one that we do like better in person, um, how they feel, we'll, we'll do our little, you know, our little box opening, yeah. I guess, per se. From, so, awesome, Rudis. Um, good luck. Hopefully the site's up and running soon. I know you have a multitude of people uh, wanting to get this order in uh, for the pre-sale, which I think is pretty awesome Yeah. Uh, that you're getting this kind of support. So, you know, um, yeah, so awesome, awesome stuff there. All right, speaking of just gear and other things, and uh, my man Tyler's rocking the fanny pack again today. I just was kind of like, uh, hey, he's got his fanny pack. Yeah, here we go. All right, so... Just based off of that, I was like, hey, did you see, uh, I know you follow David Taylor, did you see yeah. his fanny pack? Yeah. It's like a Versace or a Gucci one. Gucci. Yeah, think, yeah. So I just thought it was funny. I was looking at something, I saw that, and it just, um, I was like, hey, I guess the fanny pack thing is coming coming back around. Yeah. Oh, they're geez. they're awesome. So I bought mine. Like, I've been wanting one, and then I know, like, Cody Freeland and Justin started wearing them. Mm -hmm. um, I bought mine, and I was like, all right, here we go. Uh, finally got it. It's going to look cool. I can definitely use it for when I'm in the woods and all that. I was thinking that. And then... I got used to not having stuff in my pockets, and yeah. ever since then, I just wear it everywhere now. No shame. I, I walk into anywhere where, rocking the fanny pack. I've got all the pockets for like my wallet and stuff, and it's a much, much more convenient lifestyle. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Kind of cool. So, maybe I might rock one. I don't know. Rudis, we'll make a fanny pack. Yeah. Wouldn't that be hilarious? <laughs> the Kyle <laughs> Snyder. <laughs> I wonder what they would call that one. What kind of bags did the... Romans wear, you know. Good All right, idea. so I think this episode we're gonna kind of go off track a little bit, you know. Um, you know, so we did talk about Rudis wrestling shoes, mentioned David Taylor and stuff, but uh, we were both watching a. Well, no, it's all kind of wrestling related. No, it's kind of. He was a wrestler. Right. Um, was a wrestler, and you know, I'm not gonna overly harp on this because after seeing it, being mad about it, um, and everything yeah. else, seeing the the reception the, on the Twitter. Like, a lot of people apparently have shared it, so it's kind of one of those things where it's... Yeah, you're you almost know, being a dead horse. Almost being a dead horse. But, you know, I was super proud of our man Justin Scoggins fighting in the UFC. Yep. Um, was that Friday night? Saturday night. Saturday, Saturday night. night um, Saturday night fight night. It used to be Friday nights were fight nights or something yeah. with, with UFC, didn't it? Yep. It used to be Friday so. night fight nights, and then they would have their pay-per-views on Saturday nights. Yeah. And then it seemed like they kind of... Uh, the UFC has gotten uber heavy on um pay-per-views yeah and one every month you know if not more sometimes it seemed like sometimes it was now, you one, usually get one one but sometimes month, it seemed like there like, were two sometimes depending on what was going on like one at the early end of the month depending on i guess one how many at the beginning of the what i guess yeah. if it was like one of those months where the way it worked out there like five weeks instead of four weeks in the month or something yeah. weird but because i could have swore like if you looked at number of pay-per-views a year it was like 16 a year instead of 12 a year or something like that. Like well, yeah, because they do some, sometimes have those special ones where it's Yeah, like, so it's like um, 16 a year, which, or even more. Um, I'm just curious. Type in over there and ask, how many pay-per-views does UFC have a, a year? Because I could swear the number was higher. It just seemed like it was getting really high. Because I remember for a while we were watching pay-per-view fights. I uh, would go to my brother-in-law's, and we'd watch maybe once a month. Um... <laughs> You know how getting rid of eight pay per views per year would could help. <laughs> the fact that it's eight, eight. that you, so the, yeah. Let's see, list of UFC, UFC pay per by UFC. by year. Let's click down over here. So kind of nice having two computers. We can do this. So okay, okay yeah, sixteen. Um, then they cut it down to twenty thirteen was thirteen, fourteen, 14, was twelve, fifteen went back to twelve. Okay, so yeah, it seemed like it was just getting more. It just seemed like we were getting over inundated with the pay-per-views and it was kind of cool because like maybe once a month maybe once every two months we'd go over to my brother-in-law's we'd order a bunch of wings yeah. and we'd watch the fights you know kind of splurge for it but it seemed like it was getting to the point where it was like dude um, I don't know about watching this one or watching that one like you know it just kind of got to be a bit much and in all honesty now 
Um, I don't watch as many of the pay-per-view fights. Um, Some of them are I awful. I don't follow as many of the fighters, per se, as I, as I once did. Uh, but there are still like different ones that I do follow that I do like to see, uh, different things like that. But back to our man, uh, Justin Scoggins, I do believe, put on a show. Um, he looked great after some time off uh, due to his back injury and came back. You know, it was one of those things that, you know, I was looking at it. I had him winning easily two out of three rounds. Um, you know, anytime you say that, like, you can, there's the questionable thing, I guess. You know, well, did he win two out of three? If he didn't win all three, is it possible? I mean, you, yeah, anything's possible. But I think this is one of those ones where... I think everybody saw it, but as soon as they showed the stat where it said on that first round significant strikes, like the dude had that many yeah. one in it, I was like, what? I was like, eh? I was completely yeah. baffled. And then when they hit the announcement that, um, how do you say his last name? Uh, Saeed Nurmagomedov. Nurmagomedov. That Nurm, yeah, it's Nurmagomedov. Because it's not the same as his cousin. Uh, it's not. No, uh, no, it's the same. Khabib Nurgamay, Nurgamay. But Khabib, that's yeah. so they always just say is the the. I thought Khabib was the last name. I was like, because they always just <laughs> they so just they, call Khabib because it's easier Khabib. to pronounce. Yeah, okay, mm, that makes much more sense. So, yeah, you know, as soon as they did, I was like, dude, they 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 kind of had this set up. Justin spoiled their party um, for the Khabib's cousin being the line, you know, the next headline, and you know, mm-hmm. kind of marking their stuff, which kind of, you know. It leads to a bunch of different things. One, I feel I hate it for Justin because he put on a great fight. Honestly, think he won it. And but I his game plan to and, and I said two things that he he got um, for lack of a better term screwed on was one the win, two just the work that he put in and how good he looked. And nobody's gonna talk about how crisp he looked, how sharp he was. Oh, God. Did he at that one point have that killer instinct and go in and finish him off when he rocked him? No, but he was on his game plan, and it looked like he, that shot was going to well, come open again later so on. So, for instance, he even said he, he matured and yeah. listened to his coaches and didn't like rush in and get swarmed in and, and caught on things where yeah. that's happened before. So th- that's what I mean. It's just like a whole evolution of his game that is not going to be talked about. That really should be with how great everything was going. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Like my passion for MMA. I don't know if you ever want to call it a passion, but it was the high interest. The, yeah. I, something I thoroughly enjoyed. I liked it. I liked that wrestlers had an avenue to go to after you know college if they're not going to the world worlds and Olympic mm-hmm. level and things like that. So there's a lot of reasons for my like for UFC, but at the same time, just it seems like I don't know what last year to two years. You know, it's like. Mm, I think they're doing fine as far as marketing and everything else yeah. and their numbers and they're not worried about me. But like my interest in it and my like for the UFC is faded a little bit. Like I get that they are an entertainment company as well. Like they're not a sports company in the sense of it's not the NFL. It's not Major yeah. League Bas- Baseball. It's not basketball. It's not like you have two teams, there's a clear cut winner. We have something where there are judges, but what's going on is. There's not like a unification and, and score. I mean, because it boils down to whether you like it or not, it ultimately boils down to the opinion of a judge. So the opinion of a judge can look at it one way. So he can see it as, and this is what someone say, were saying, they're like, well, Sometimes the judges will take more into account of the fighter coming forward, but the problem is, the, you know, Justin, while he wasn't coming forward and he was, I don't. He wasn't say, backing out. He, he was, wasn't backing he was out. He was countering. Yeah, Remember that he way? was counter. He's a yeah. counter striker. He's a counter it's, striker. It's a karate type style and everything. And he was lighting and, it up. And that doesn't even bother me so much. Like if one judge could see it one way, that's why you're supposed to have three judges. Yeah. But, but sometimes there's own, not enough. I guess not because what my overall thing with it is. Is because it's an entertainment thing, and this is what I do like about Bellator is when they have their tournaments. There's yeah. not, they put so much on storylines, which I do like storylines. It makes it entertaining. I think wrestling can use storylines. Um, Ohio State versus Penn State, the storyline. I love storylines, which is great. But what the UFC is doing is they're making storylines instead of finding the story within a situation. Yeah. They're making storylines, and in a case like this, they were looking for a storyline of Khabib being the co- Khabib's cousin, being the cousin of the current 
uh, belt holder, how good is he, and you know, let's watch him on his rise with running his his five win winning yeah. streak, and now you know against a UFC veteran and blah blah. You know, I'm like they're looking to make these storylines, and I don't I don't know because this would be like completely out of my realm of knowledge. Like I don't think the UFC would be like this is our storyline. He's going to win. I don't know. For instance, do you could, remember could it happen that way? Could the UFC yeah. tell the judges what they're looking for for who'd win? Because the way the announcers are talking, that's the first thing they talk about. But yeah. so that's my problem, and that and like the whole, you know, and Conor McGregor did and did it great. But like when you come in and you talk your way into a fight versus going through a tournament style, you win, you move on. And See, Conor's was more way. organic. Conor, that's his personality. It oh yeah, felt more organic instead of you can tell who right. they're trying to make it and all that. But no, do you remember, after Justin beat Ray Borg, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, dominated Ray Borg, who has actually fought for the title against Demetrius Johnson, Yeah. Um, Justin made a comment saying, to me, there is no Demetrius Johnson, there's only a Justin Scoggins, I'm the champion of the division. He kind of played into that a little bit, he talked, you know, mm -hmm. people were like, oh, okay, and then what happened then? They, they scheduled a, a fight with him and Ian McCall. Mm -hmm. So it's like... You have to make yourself marketable. You do have to make yourself marketable, but my problem with the UFC is like it's just that. It's like yeah. a lot of this is marketing and a lot of it's entertainment. And like as much as I want to be entertained and I want the storyline stall, I just you know, we already have the WWE, which, you know, we all kind of watch or have watched and you know, uh, and that's where you have the made up storylines and yeah. you let that stuff happen and that's and that's all fun. That's it is what it is. But I wish that it wouldn't be that something that you, they was looked for. I wish it was something that, yeah, you have some people that are talking and doing things, but let it come from this is the tournament, this is the way it is, or this is the ranking. We're going to rank off, you know, these guys fight up through the ranking yeah. to get there. Yeah, sometimes you might skip, say, if you're the number 10 guy in the way. Yeah, you might jump fighting the number six guy because he's unavailable he was hurt and you might fight the number four guy or the number five guy and so, you know like instead yeah. of working your way through it kind of like I don't know or, or there there's not a set bracket you know I guess from wrestling I just like brackets there's not yeah. a bracket system like hey these are the guys that get to the championship like there's no clear path it's like it's a storyline path yes I gotta be good but can I talk my way to that path and then yeah. or is there a niche or something that the UFC likes that they want to market to get this guy to move forward which is how I felt this fight kind of was and, I, and unfortunately it was against our man and I just that it left a sour taste in my mouth. I didn't even watch the rest of the fight card. I didn't um, either. I, I watched some Netflix as I was turning off the, um, the computer and some other stuff. I saw Mendez's fight. I was happy to see him win again because um, at first I was like, man, I used to like um, Sean Shirk. Mendez reminded me of him. Yeah. Similar build. Sean Shirk was awesome. Went out, on wrestler, went out on suspension, came back, and then just never was the same again. Apparently, like, Mendez looked great. Did oh, it. he looked amazing. Um, did it, so he didn't pull the, the Sean Shirk, which was used to be one of my favorites. And, you know, so I was glad to see him make his comeback and, yeah. and do well. But after that, I turned it off and, you know, was, so was done with Speaking of storylines, I'm going to drop some conspiracy knowledge if you want to hear about it. Yeah. Have you heard who's paying for Connor's lawyers? Mm. The UFC. Apparently, the UFC is providing Connor with some lawyers. No, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I, someone was telling me this, and I was like, this can't be true. Like, so I'm, I'm trying to, I don't want to, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but that's the last thing I've heard. And if that's true, talk about some preferential treatment. Like, you ruin their show, and then they give you a lawyer to defend yourself? Yeah, that's... Yeah. But, but I like Connor, though, so I'm okay with it. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing, though. It like, is. I don't know. We'll see what happens with all that and with all the stuff, you know. It's also interesting that, like, what is what's the the suit against them is it just a civil suit is it the city i haven't seen or heard anything i, I have none it's, of the fighters have pressed charges against no them, a couple a few of them I, I think it's about 10 of them have but i haven't heard anything yeah. about it though like no you haven't heard anything about it yet but there's there's about 10 and they said that they're, he's facing probably up to um i think they said it's probably gonna get solved out of court well yeah quietly. if they're if the UFC is paying for it and then there are other UFC fighters then everybody's mm -hmm. just gonna get a little the main one's Michael Chiesa though the one who got injured uh, that's the main one the other ones are people just who said they were traumatized by yeah. the event which so, is ridiculous but at the same time I don't know the whole thing seemed very I don't know the more I watch it or 
think back about it WWE style like you know it's stenches of stageness you know you know I mean it's just so much with all that stuff well, okay so. well speaking of that then WWE you know that what did you think of uh, D- um, DC and Brock Lesnar oh I thought that was funny I yeah I loved it everyone's hating on it like oh it's fake it's fake okay but it did its job mm-hmm. you know why it did its job and I made a video about this because Brock Lesnar the last time he fought was two uh, UFC 200 which was, I think, like two years ago. Um, Is and that it, Mark Hunt? Yeah, against Mark Hunt, where he had the controversial... Foot cream um, that I need to get hold of. Yeah, that, that controversial foot cream, uh, the, the drug test. Mark Hunt wasn't a contender at that point. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he was kind of middle of the road. It's So it's not like Brock Lesnar, you know, was in line for a title shot. He literally waltzed in. And because DC called him out and they had that little scuffle in the ring... What does Dana White say? He's like, yeah, that's the title fight we're making. We're gonna make happen. Well, I mean, it was kind of one of those things. Like, yeah. And DC had already said that he wants to cut, like three more fights, and one yeah. of them was that. So was well, Lesnar. Um, but I, I mean, it's was... it's one of those things that it's it's you know, storyline. But see, that kind of storyline, I don't mind. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. That is not like that's not affecting. Yeah, like, I say it's not affecting anybody else, but at the same time. You know, Brock hadn't been fighting it could affect every other heavyweight fighter in the division yeah. but that also just shows maybe how weak the division is that is like, Brock weak. could come in and do that so I, I'm going to go back on it's not messing with anybody the storyline against oh, not yeah. against Justin but like the storyline in Justin's fight case that I think does affect other people and is kind of a made up storyline and kind of built in this kind of made up storyline is awesome because it happens after yeah. the fight he called him out Brock Lesnar is a seller in a You've got the oohs and, and all Yeah, and it, and it doesn't. And that's, to me, fun. That didn't determine the outcome of anything. Oh, yeah. It wasn't decided by judges to make that happen. It, it, it was what it was. Although, I was very curious to see. I wonder if um, DC ever goes back down to like heavyweight. Apple. You want an apple? Yeah. And this little guy here wants an apple. Hmm? What are you doing? Are you going to sit here again? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so he's a little fighter too. You want an apple? Yes. Alright, go tell Sissy to go get you an apple, okay? Or I'll come get you an apple in a second. Dad, you sort of say that yeah. you don't get what subscribers if you interrupt with other things. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Alright, so Devin says we're going to lose subscribers. Devin, get your brother an apple. You said Madeline. Well, I'm telling you now since I saw you with one in your hand, okay? <laughs> Alright, your brother's going to go get you an apple, okay? Okay. Alright, go sit down with your brother. Okay. Right here. Oh, you wanna? Oh, yes. You are so full of yourself. So, speaking of him being full of himself, did you see? Which kind of leads into, in a way, our next thing with vacations. Did you see the picture I posted of him, like the family picture, and then like what he was doing? Uh, huh? I don't think right. I did. I was so, doing that. I don't know why I'm doing that. Alright, brother's getting you an apple. Go. Okay. Check it out. Alright. You can have it in there. That's fine. So I'll show you the picture really quick. So the boy is hilarious. And I'm going to go back to my stuff. And we're going to look at the turn. Oh, what's he doing? I don't know. So we're talking about my son who, who just came in. But um, the Zoolander face type thing. Yeah, something. Somebody was like mysterious and brooding. Somebody was like, you watch too much Baywatch. So for those of you who don't know, I, I guess you got anything else to add on the UFC bit? Anything no, no, no. Kind of done there? Yeah. Um, other than you, you're like what, Bellator guy now? Oh, I love, yeah, I love so, Bellator. I, yeah. I'm not even going to hide it. You know, yeah. you got Chael P. Sonnen talking people in the house against Fedor. Yeah, you got to love Bellator. Yeah. And they have Bellator kickboxing, which is interesting. Really? Yeah, so Bellator, uh, for those of y'all don't know, like, if you know about kickboxing, you have, like, Glory, K1, and all that. Bellator actually has, um, and it's called Bellator kickboxing, they have kickboxing events, like an actual ring. Huh. Um, I did not know they had they, a whole kickboxing thing. Yeah, just and they that. have like a strictly, they have a belt system for it and everything. That's awesome. And it's a it's a kickboxing thing. It's That's cool. Awesome. It was on the other night. I was watching. It's not and One of the best things they have are, uh, I'll say two best things now. Um, they have Aaron Pico and mm-hmm. uh, Ed Ruth. So, yeah. former well, speaking wrestlers. Of, speaking of Aaron Pico, the guy who uh, repped his last fight, Blake Grice, I just recently had on my podcast. Check it out. I am a little more than halfway through listening to that yeah. podcast, and I thought that was... Uh, Really spot on. Yeah, he's about, a uh, and I had no idea right? that you know he got started with just by accident. Like, hey, yep. can anybody do this? And he raised his hand. So sure. I'm not going to go into his whole podcast or like give the whole story away. But yeah. you know, a great story. So um, I thought that was awesome. So 
Well, good job with that. Keep it up and go check him out on the TRT Curry. Or uh, it's just the, T Curry podcast. Oh, just T, yeah. TRT Curry is his Instagram. Instagram. Sorry. So just the, the T yeah. Curry podcast because he. Was, All you had to do is uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just click on our channel and go to channels, and then there, yeah. there's a link to my my channel. So yeah, so check out my channels. Yep. So uh, it was a good interview, but like I was just saying, so kind of transitioning off again we're kind of just going all over the place so I was just off on vacation and I was really thinking about doing a subcast on this and I actually had planned to do it while I was down there I was like you know wait kids are taking a nap I'll just about pull and do it but you know vacation just happened to just end up being that and ended up being vacation didn't even get a chance to uh to try and record and, and get everything going but I just kind of was like really thought about it and I was like you know instead of doing a whole subcast we're here yeah. we're on a lot of different things but I was like you know and you can tell me what you think, but I was like, you know, the importance of vacation, I think, right now is, not right now, but of any time, I think it's pretty big. It's just, after taking the classes that I took and having that chance to um, professional development and do things, I just really got to think about things and vacations. Like, it doesn't matter if it's big or small, like, we all need that time off. Yeah. We need, whether it be a change of pace, a change of location, um... You know, I know you stayed here and hung out. Somebody's like, hey, that could be a vacation. You know, it's just a change of location, something different. Anything that allows you to like recharge your batteries is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's something that we all need to take time and, and do. Um, and I was thinking about this while I was on vacation. And I went for a couple runs. I was still exercising. We had a couple workouts. I brought my sandbags and stuff in there. Yeah, I saw um, that. So the wife that. That took cool. us through some workouts. And, you know, I had a really good time with it. And some people were like, yeah, continue with the grind. But I was going to say, though, I was like, but do what makes you happy on your vacation. Mm -hmm. And if you're constantly grinding and your vacation needs to be literally a week of you not doing anything, hey, do, it. do that. Do whatever you need to do for your vacation. If you need to go for a run and go exercise still, go do that. If you need to just chill and not do anything, just go do that. So I'm all about Sounds vacation. Sounds exactly like what I've talked to someone about. So for those of y'all don't know, like we do grind a lot. Mm -hmm. I grind a lot, you know, with, with working and then I'll go record videos. And sometimes I, I can't get to the videos all the time, but but still it's like I record them. I try to find guests. I work out a lot. I train a lot. Um, and for y'all who don't know, if y'all follow me on like Instagram, y'all notice that I've spent a lot more time like hiking and all that now. Uh, I was telling someone about that. It's like sometimes for me, like I do need those one or two days off, not too many days off. But I, I started to enjoy spending time in the woods because it's, you know, with all this grind and all this technology, like I'm, a, I'm a having to be on my phone all the time. Sometimes it's good to go out and just, you know, have things mm -hmm. where it's very cut and dry. You know, nothing where I'm not having too much technology. I can just be out in the woods. It's me in the woods. Um, it's quiet. I don't have to worry about being on a phone because it usually don't have service. And it's, it's one of those things that it recharges my batteries personally. Now, that might not be for everyone. But yeah. I mean, I think it's important to recharge your batteries. I think it's important to take care of yourself. Oh, yeah. One of those things that we've talked about before, taking care of yourself. And I think vacationing is a way to do that. Whether it be a weekend, whether it be a day's hike, whether it be an entire week to the beach or to the mountains or something else. Uh, I've still got another trip where I'm going to go uh, meet some family. We're going to actually do some camping as well. Um, and I was also thinking about this. Like, There's some people that are out there that are like, well, you shouldn't have to take a vacation from your life. You should just. Some people need a change. In their, and I don't necessarily believe that. To the extent with which some people always say it. I do think that sometimes if you're living for your vacation so much that you're not happy with your life, yeah, sometimes maybe changes yeah, change happen. Them. But at the same time, though, sometimes things are just good and you just need a vacation because you, mm -hmm. need, you need to do what a vacation is. You need yeah. to recharge your batteries. You need to change a pace and you need to, to look for something different. Be around for family. Uh, you know, just being around, no fam being around family, which uh, you know, our vacation was a family vacation for those of you that follow me and I post a lot of stuff with all that you know it was, it was family time uh, I've got some more family coming in uh, I am lucky that I am also a coach and a school teacher that I get summers off um, Ju June gets really busy July is a little bit more uh, vacation like but you know even to that though like people are like you know follow your dreams like I you know hey maybe it would be great maybe it would be awesome to you know divulge dive full Full head and like open up a, a club and just a gym and just all that kind of stuff you know I'm, I, I I haven't been ready to take that plunge yet maybe one day or something I don't know but that being said like do what you gotta do take care of yourself go out in the woods go for a hike because um, people don't realize one of the biggest killers of people nowadays and not I mean when you start looking at like heart attacks heart problems and all that, a lot of it comes from stress mm -hmm. and so 
Think about it like that. Taking just a little bit of time off for yourself can possibly save your life. I mean, I know it's kind of a, a very provocative statement, yourself. but... You know, it's one of those things, too. It's like, um, if you look at it, uh, they always say, like, uh, I was talking to, I know some people that do massages that are masseuse, and they were saying, for like, every X number of massages they get, they have to go get one. So you have to take care of yourself mm-hmm. as well. So, um, like psychiatrists, you listen to other people's problems. you got to have somebody else to talk to on your own. Um, you can have a great, perfect life. Maybe you are living your dream job and you've done everything else that's said. Doesn't mean you can't go on vacation and get away and just recharge those batteries to get back to your dream job too, you know? So take care of yourself. Enjoy those vacations, whether it be as simple as going on a, on a camping trip um, or going down to the beach for a week. Whatever it is that you can do, find a way to take care of yourself. Uh, whether it be like that homemade vacation where maybe you go unplug the Wi-Fi, shut it all off, and... You know, build a fire in the backyard and just go enjoy life that way. You know, um, do what you gotta do. Take technology. Care. Take care of yourself. You know, and it sounds crazy. Like I said, I know it's not it for is. everyone, but no. getting away from technology. Get away from it. Like, subscribe to us yeah. and then listen to it when you come back. And then, <laughs> yeah, then you can do that. But no, yeah. I, I challenge everyone. Take one day, and I've I've started getting to the point where I'm like this. I I I'll spend time like I will not touch my phone for like hours on end. Spend one day. Don't touch your phone. Don't touch like a computer. You know, maybe watch TV if, like, it's your day off, maybe. But, like, just get out and experience life outside of these little rectangular screens that we've been we've become so glued to. Yeah. Um, that's just my challenge for you guys. So. All right. Since we've been completely yeah. off the wall, uh, we briefly talked about it. And I was just something that um, I saw because I was attached to a device or was looking at it. Um, but I know my man's got the, the Spider-Man shirt. But I also know, like, we're both into comics, comic movies and other things. And I saw something where they were doing Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. Yeah. And where I thought that was really interesting and kind of cool, I was kind of like, they're still doing another Jared Leto one, or mm-hmm. a Jared Leto Joker movie is also in the writing. And I kind of asked you about it before. You kind of had like a, a little idea as to why they might be doing it. But I was thinking, do they really need two different Joker movies so close to each other with two different actors portraying the Joker? Um, I kind of liked what your idea yeah. was and what you said might be the thing but I don't know like what do you want to tell everybody what you said earlier? okay so I, I heard this from now this is not my theory this is a theory I heard from like a couple other people uh, it, it was just kind of off the wall so for those of y'all don't know Joaquin Phoenix um, the guy who played the uh, emperor the, the emperor who ends up taking over in the movie Gladiator He's got the little hair look thing he's played in signs and all that um, good actor lots he's of a great actor, actor. He's, a, he's a method actor too a lot of people don't they, they forget his phase when he went crazy for the sake of a movie to become a rapper did you ever see that so he went through this weird phase where he, he started like you know doing all these raps and stuff and he did it for like I think it was like a year and a half the entire time it comes out he was actually doing it for a movie hmm. and he like dove into the role so he's yeah, one of those men, a lot of people yeah. that, that do that like yeah. depending on the role like somebody plays like they don't like to be around people because they play that yeah. that creepy role or the serial killer or people don't realize that um, thing. Like some Heath Ledger when he played the Joker he only slept for like two to three hours a day yeah to um, kind of give that yeah to get that little sleep deprived craziness and well anyway Joaquin Phoenix is one of those method actors so I think he can delve himself into this role and do a, a really good job but you have on the other hand you have Jared Leto who has had an entirely different take on the Joker that we've never seen not even in comics like you've never seen this weird looking Joker um, I really liked it and I even said that was interesting I was like you yeah. know I could watch a Joker Harley Quinn standalone movie yeah it was and... very interesting mm-hmm. um, now they kind of got the Harley Quinn Joker relationship mixed up like instead of it it, it was like I, well, which is a good thing but it's like it was not nearly as abusive as it is in like comics and all that but um I, I mean, I like Jared Leto's, but someone was saying that if you if you follow like the Batman storylines, at some point um, one of the Robins, Jason Todd, I think it is, um, he gets taken by the Joker, tortured, and he, anyway, he becomes like another makeshift Joker. Yeah. And some people were saying that because of this Joker being so ludicrous and off the wall, maybe this is maybe this Joker is the Jason Todd Joker mm-hmm. and the Joaquin Phoenix Joker is going to be the actual Joker yeah. or vice versa we, you know you never know I think I kind of like that storyline idea better but I don't think it's going to happen that way I just oh, think I don't that um, it, it's that the they're ball. just it's they're, too elaborate yeah they're just searching for movies yeah. and they got two good actors that can play it and they're going to run with both of those why so, not yeah. well that's like for instance um, this is part of the Spider-Man universe 
Uh, if y'all don't know, in October, the movie Venom's coming out with Tom Hardy. My um, favorite villain. I am worried because it's not going to take place in the MCU. Yeah. So that means... It's, it's the Sony gonna, version. It's yeah, the, it's the Sony version, which is... So it's not really going to involve... Um, like Tom Holland, Spider Man. It's not going to involve any like any of the Marvel su- uh, heroes that you're it used to. It bothers me that my favorite villain is going to be in a standalone movie, and what makes Venom Venom? The symbiote is the symbiote, and also you can't have Venom without Spider Man. Yeah, you cannot. It's just and weird because that's part of his thing. Is <laughs> Venom's hate. For Spider Man, for Spider Man is, is what, what become and Eddie Brock's hate yeah. for him is why they become poisoned, which is where they even came up with the name. We are Venom. Mm-hmm. It's the whole thing, and you can't have it without him. And they're doing a standalone movie where he looks awesome, but I'm worried it's gonna be like the first Hulk movie where oh, everybody God. hated it, and you're only gonna see like the yeah. Hulk show up at the end. So we'll only see Venom show up at the end, like in full, like full out. And it's not going to be right. And my I'm thing just, that I so what I'm kind of mad because it's yeah. like my favorite character where it's going to look cool, but the storyline is going to be wrong. So what worries me is I think they might follow the comics, but they might fast forward a lot. So if you know about the comics, Venom here recently has kind of played more of this like anti-hero role. Like he's uh-huh. he's bonded with other people like the Punisher and all that too. But he um, the symbiote has at least. So Venom's kind of he. He's tiptoed the line of being good and bad plenty here recently. But you can't do that until yeah. he goes through and the has evil to, phase. Like you have he to, has to go through the evil phase. You have to. He has to. That. He has to have spawned off Carnage. Yeah. And then did you know about like uh, Toxin? Like uh, yeah, there's Toxin, and then you yeah. have um, there's like three other ones that are like the children of the symbiote. There's the whole and, sim- and Toxin was apparently the strongest of. All of them, mm-hmm. um, from what I was reading and doing stuff. Sorry. Then you have here. then you have but the there's like a whole symbiote three. family. And, there is and all that kind of stuff. But there's a symbiote world too. Yeah. Well, he came from somewhere. Yeah. You know, there's like a whole symbiote planet. Everything's just symbiotes. Yeah. But uh, you don't get that until after you get the initial storyline, and I just kind of, you know, I don't know. It just yeah. it worries me. It worries. I'm me still gonna have to see it because I, I love Venom. Venom's probably one of my favorite uh, villains of all. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanos has recently taken... He's kind of slowly working his way up there, which I would love to see Galactus. Why have we not had a Galactus movie yet? Uh, we have. Well, Silver he, Surfer. Silver Surfer, but he's like... I mean, it's it's not the real I, Galactus. I, I know. Opinion. It's just... It's it's kind of like... Yeah, you know, I forgot about... Like, I keep forgetting about that one. The the Silver Surfer? Yeah, Silver or Surfer. The, uh, you forget that um, every kick butt um, MCU... Dude was was uh the Human Torch, the Human Torch, uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Yeah, he plays and, he plays Captain America. Yeah, and guess who else was the Human Torch when they redid the the Fantastic Four and it kind of bombed because nobody has seen it. This is the them, new but... one with the uh, black fella. That yeah. sounded really bad, by the way. I didn't mean that. What's his name? Um, um, I know who it is, but yeah, it's Killmonger. I'm, yeah, because I was watching. Like they it. reincarnate all like. The, as the Human Torch. As the, the Human Torch, you you, you, you know, kind of bomb as the Human Torch, and then yep. you come back as a kick-butt character in the Marvel MCU. Yeah. You come back as Captain America and Killmonger. Yeah, I mean, it's... That, I was trying, I was just like, because I remember I was watching the newer one, because I saw it on TV, and then I was reading the description, and I was like, that doesn't sound like the original one, and then I started watching it, and it's got the guy from... Uh, I forget his name, but he's played in multiple movies. Creed and everything else. Uh, yeah, yeah um, him, but it's also got... Uh, the guy who plays Mr. Fantastic, basically, and then you also mm-hmm, have, yeah. um, per, you know, Victor Von Doom. I was looking at his character, and they're all younger. Like this is more of a college version of them. And I was like, I'll I, had, gonna, I haven't seen, I haven't seen it yet. So. I saw bits and pieces. It's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, I liked it. it I mean, I, I didn't mind the first two Fantastic Four movies. They weren't yeah, they were bad. Okay. I mean, they weren't great, but they weren't bad. But yeah, it's just that funny was a that... weird phase of where. Now, I don't know. Was Sony making those as well? It might have been. It was What they did was like they were making the comic movies, and they were a little more comic-esque. Yeah, like you had the yeah. Hulk. The Hulk movies weren't that great. You they were like comic, three different yeah. actors playing. They were, they were like comic book-esque, and you kind yeah. of enjoyed them because they had a comic book feel to them versus yeah. them using a comic book storyline to make a yeah. movie, which is what they kind of now have done. But and it's, it's working right now. The way Marvel is doing it is is great because like they're mm-hmm. they're even changing small things but it's not making like significant yep. changes but it's small enough changes to where people are like ooh that's awesome that's but cool. we'll see like I said they're bankrolling on uh, 
Captain Marvel. Captain we'll see Marvel, how this. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how this pans out. Mm. And I, I, yeah, I we said, talked about this on I the way said, to the mud run. Yeah, I was like, Captain Marvel is going to be um, the MCU's version of Wonder, Wonder Woman, Wonder. and I don't think it's going to be as strong. Well, um, because if character. I'm not mistaken, Captain Marvel was a guy first. And it was, then he and then he his... passed it to yeah. yeah so I wonder if they're gonna to... if they're gonna show that part. Captain, what well, was well, she? Was it was Captain Marvel? She did have yeah. a different name, but well, ooh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy too. I, I the little Easter egg at the end. You didn't see which you one? See that one? I've... Oh, when they're creating, they're like, this is gonna be, um, this is gonna be our weapon. I guess to fight them. Mm -hmm. It's it's referring to uh, what's the name? Thanos or no Andy Warlock? I think it is or Warlock. Hmm. Who actually ends up getting the infi uh, Infinity yeah, Gauntlet? Yeah, he does. He was like the, um, he's the one that I think took everything back in time and like yeah. re rewrite everybody back to life after all that. Yeah, happened. that's at the very uh, end the uh, sovereigns or whatever. That's who apparently that they were making. Yeah. In the end. So I'm not going to give any spoilers for those yeah. who haven't read the Infinity Gauntlet series, the comic books. Yeah. About who, what happens, all that good stuff. I think they're loosely following that so I don't want to yeah. mention that to other people because I was talking to somebody else and they were like well don't say it I was like okay I won't tell you what I think is going to happen but we all were supposed stuff. to see Professor Hulk though hmm? Professor Hulk mm -hmm. they really, they came out with a teaser poster and did they? Yeah. well I told you what I said about what I thought was happening with the Hulk with the Red Hulk and yeah, the Red Hulk. Hulk well see yeah. they, they the reason they think it's Professor Hulk is because in the poster this isn't necessarily a spoiler but they also had him in the trailer for Infinity War so this could change but there's a picture yeah, yeah. of the Hulk in there, and instead of you know being shirtless and all that, he's actually wearing a uh, a suit. He's wearing like a. Actual... And it should be gray, right? Uh, be... No, he's actually green, is in, which is a, which is a little. Which is I thought the gray Hulk was the small. Yeah, the he smart is. Hulk. That's the one I think that's Professor Hulk. Yeah, the smart Hulk. The red yeah. Hulk's angrier. Yeah, all that which is even weirder because Hulk's angry as is. Yeah, exactly. So, <clears throat> all right. So wrestle talk. Wrestling talk. Um, we'll see. Hopefully we're not biting somebody else's thing, but we might call that when we have an episode like this where we're off the wall and we come back to wrestling. Um, I think, and I'm biased, um, one of the greatest wrestling tournaments, um, high school age tournaments going on right now, Fargo. Yeah. All right. Uh, cadets and juniors, uh, going on Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, it's basically, um, Freestyle and Greco Nationals. Um, it's been dubbed Fargo because of its location, and I think it's one of the greatest tournaments out there. You qualify as a state, like meaning you, there's, it's not a high school, like it's not like senior nationals and you won state and you go, you have to win whatever wrestle offs your state has for a qualify uh, on your state's team and the state's travel. So it's Team Florida, Team Oklahoma. Team New York, team, you know, so team South Carolina <clears throat> and such like that. So I think, which they have taken, yeah, uh, people in the past. So I think it's the greatest, you know, national high school tournament. Uh, again, I'm biased. I wrestled for Team Oklahoma, uh, went there, uh, got chunked on my head. So I'm glad, um, maybe, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'm glad maybe Flo wasn't there at the time when I was there because I might have been on one of those Fargo bombs, except I'd been on the recipient side. I remember a cat from Minnesota, um. Hey, you can always get famous <clears throat> by doing that, though. I know someone who's gotten famous by dropping themselves on the head, their heads. So. Yeah. Mm. Please don't kill me. Yeah, for saying that. So, <laughs> but yeah, so I got a I got Fargo bomb twice from a cap from Minnesota in a Greco match. So, yeah, um, two five point throws. How's the end of that match? So I'll never forget that one. But I was there. I qualified. I was able to go, yeah, and I, I mean, think it's a I, and it's just a great atmosphere. It's a great tournament. Um, We'll talk about Dayton Fix getting his provisional wrestle off here in just a second. But my question is, like, there's so many different now national tournaments. And some of them, I think, are are valid. I mean, is it good that we have so many of them calling them nationals? Or do you think they should no. have different names, at least? I think they should uh, like have the ones different that, names. The ones but... that have, like, different names. Like, Super 32 is awesome. Yeah. Um, you have, like, Beast of the East. Um, Who's number one? Flo's got the uh, now who's yeah. number one. Yeah, that's but there's version. different one. Yeah, but there's so many different ones that I I don't know if they all call themselves nationals. They're they can't all be so, the top things. No, you got no, Disney no. duels, junior yeah. duels. I mean, you got all these different things. Um, so you don't think they should all be? No, I think it's oversaturation. It's the same thing with the UFC pay per views. It's it doesn't make it as special if you have, if you have like multiple different tournaments. I feel mm -hmm. like, for instance, I agree with you. I think Fargo is the best tournament for high schoolers and all that at that mm -hmm. national level 
I think Fargo should be the measuring stick. Now you could still have these other tournaments. Yeah. I feel, I feel like not not saying anything against like the Beast of the East Super Thirty Twos. Um, Those are awesome. Super Thirty Two is the best preseason yeah. tournament. Yeah. Now that that's yeah. always fun to watch. But it's like I'm not saying that these aren't important and they can be. But I still think as a wrestler, at that at that level, mm-hmm. I feel like your your goal should be let's get to Fargo and let's win Fargo. I think yeah. I think Fargo should be the the pinnacle of that of that um yeah. of all those tournaments. So yeah, I think it, it becomes like an oversaturation yeah. to an extent. Like I still think you need that one big like how would it be if you had six WrestleManias in one year? Yeah. It's like just it, it yeah. would ruin the well, so I'm kind of torn too. Like I, I do agree with you with Fargo being the best one. I think Super Thirty Two is the best preseason one. There's some other ones, uh, the Dapper Dan and uh, um, Iron Man, and there's ones that like have that history to them, which I think are really good and great. Um, I do think there's been a lot that have come up that maybe don't have the prestige. Yeah. And I am, I get what you're saying with the super saturation of things, but at the same time, I do think we need them because I think it gives a lot. Uh, gives it gives an opportunity yeah. for people to go do stuff. No, I mean I agree. To make it. They're so, needed, but so, don't don't gimmick yeah. them as being like the yeah. best. Yeah. So I'm gonna go Fargo's the greatest one. Um, also, Dayton Fix got to wrestle. Uh, everybody should already know this, but he's gonna be our um, junior yep. world team member. So he's gonna you know he About got the provisional re- he got the provisional wrestle off after going to the senior tournament while still junior uh, eligible, which I think is just awesome that he did that well. And I think he just um, yeah, you know, I mean, he kind of he showed why he was able to go at the senior level and went at and went to juniors and you know rightfully I think we're sending our best guy uh, to worlds for for that age yeah, group. For so uh, happy for him. Kind of went at the same time though, like kind of feel bad for Courtney. But, like he kind of you know he's the he's the next guy. He's there. It's not his fault that fix went. Somebody goes you know, at the senior level yeah. then comes back and gets that shot. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of one of those things it's that... The, it's the nature of the beast. The nature of the beast, and it's also best for our country if we're trying to bring back medals yeah. as a country as well, so... Which I think know. we're going to. Oh, yeah, we're going so... We're bring back boats of them. Yeah, so I think it's going to be awesome to see all that, so... You know, I think we had a... Uh, we got... We talked about a lot of things other than just wrestling, but we did come back to wrestling. Um, if you haven't checked things out, just type in Fargo Bomb. Uh, or hashtag Fargo bomb if you want to see some great throws because there's been some ones. Someone's said, gonna one. have hidden camera footage mm-hmm. like the old school shaky VHS one of you somewhere. Some, yeah, somebody's somewhere. got it somewhere. <laughs> so um, yeah, but yeah, the one I sent you, great stuff there and everything mm-hmm. else. So that being said, I think the boy finished with a waffle. Yay! I done with my gal. There you go. Done with the apple, and there it is. Done with the apple. All right. Well, you want to say bye bye? Okay. So, on that note, we're out of here. Oh, wait, somebody else. She's got to brush her hair, though, before she moves on. I don't brush my hair. <laughs> yeah, on that one, we are. Um, hey, also, if you don't already know, go check out Rural Soap. Uh, moved out to Idaho, hosting a lot of great stuff out there. A lot of great things. Still great soap. Still great for any on the mat things, whether it be yeah. wrestling, jujitsu, whatever it is you're using. Multiple gyms have picked him up now, if I'm not mistaken. I know yeah. Open Source in Asheville, North Carolina, they actually carry a soap. I think a gym out of New York now carries it too. There you go. Uh, so yeah, it's... But you can get to, you can get to it as well, etsy.com slash shop slash roll, roll soap. soap. So, or just, uh, you know, I've got them on Etsy and just type in roll soap. They'll show up, get you some soap. They also got in. t-shirts too if you want to support the t-shirts. They yeah. just got those fixed up. He kind of adjusted the logo. So. All right, there you yep. go. Get yourself a shirt, uh, about 10, 20 bars of soap. You know, I'm just kidding. You don't have to get that many to start, but you will want that many eventually. I, um, carry, I carry that many personally. Roll soap, uh, go get you some soap and throw in Cerebrus Wrestling for the promo code. Get yourself 10% off. Bye-bye. <laughs>